Good morning, people of Grace United Methodist Church. Pastor Kelly McQuaig here. And no, you're not seeing anything uh, wrong. You're seeing exactly what we are wanting you to see this morning. You know, we have absolutely loved live streaming our worship services for you for, for almost two whole years now. It's been a blessing. Um, I know so many of you have been blessed to be able to worship from with us uh, wherever you are at on a Sunday morning, and, um, and I'm, I'm so thankful that you're here with us again today. Uh, the reason you're seeing just me and not our entire sanctuary this morning is because, uh, well, we're not perfect, and <laughs> we had some technological um, uh, hiccups this week where we were unable to provide you a live stream option this morning. And so, uh, but the, the bright side is it's just us this morning. It's just me, and it's just you and uh, you're seeing uh, a sermon uh, that, uh, that is exactly the same sermon that is being preached live in the sanctuary this morning. Um, and I hope and I pray that as we get to worship together this morning, just you and I, uh, me on this side of the camera and you on that side, uh, that we all feel uh, the, the loving presence of Christ in our lives this week. And we're not alone. We have, um, we have dozens and dozens of people uh, joining in live right now who are worshiping right along with you. So uh, why don't you greet one another? Uh, write in the comments, hi, say hello, uh, greet one another. I wish everyone a, a blessed day um, as we worship and, and hear God's word together. It's gonna be a little bit briefer time this morning. Uh, we're not gonna have um, uh, the opening hymns, the closing hymns, the, the, the times of prayer. I am, of course, gonna pray with you and we are going to focus on God's word. Uh, but as it's just you and I this morning, uh, we're, we're getting the most important thing. We're getting God's word this morning. And so I am so excited to preach this message with you. Uh, just a few housekeeping things. Uh, know that uh, if you need anything at all uh, from the church, you can always contact the church office, leave a message uh, right here on the Facebook page. If you're on our YouTube channel, um, you can go over to our Facebook page uh, or write a comment in the YouTube uh, comment section, do whatever you need to do to get a hold of us. And we would love to, um, to be in ministry with you and to communicate with you. And if you need us for any reason, uh, please, please, please let us know. Uh, we are entering into a new season of, of Bible study together um, as, we, as we journey through this book called A Firm Foundation. More on this uh, throughout my sermon uh, later. But, but as we start a new year, uh, let's start a, a new year as an entire church, uh, resting firmly on the foundation of God and who He is calling the people at Grace United Methodist Church to be. Uh, it's, it's an exciting season for our church, and, and it's a joy to be, uh, be able to share uh, my own hopes and dreams and visions uh, for, for what God is calling us to be uh, during this time together over these next couple months. So I don't want to waste any more of your time. I, I want to dive into God's Word with you. So will you join me in a word of prayer, and I will read today's scripture passage for you, and, and we will get going. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God Almighty, I thank you for this beautiful morning that you have blessed us with. I thank you for the call that you placed on each of our lives uh, to gather and to worship here, right now, right here today. Uh, we, we have loved ones and brothers and sisters in Christ that are, that are worshiping all over the area. Um, for those worshiping right now in the Grace United Methodist Church Sanctuary in Alamogordo, uh, Lord, may you bless them and keep them and, and may their hearts be opened to, to your transforming power in your lives. And for those worshiping right here on our online campus, on Facebook and on YouTube, Lord, may you bless us. May, may we be uh, blessed with all the abundance of your love and grace. May your love be shed upon our, abroad in our hearts. And um, may we be open uh, to uh, your gospel message that you have for us today. So Lord, as, um, as I preach and as we all listen to your word together, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be perfect and pleasing to you and to you alone, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right, as you can see on your screen, uh, today's scripture passage is from uh, the New Testament. It's from Paul's second letter to, uh, to his student named Timothy. And I want to read for you uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, feel free to open those up with you now. But this is 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 5. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires. 
and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober. Enduring suffering, do the work of an evangelist. Carry out your ministry fully. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the holiday season is over. Christmas and New Year's have come and gone. And there's something that I'm realizing more and more and more with each holiday season. I'm not as young as I used to be. And by that I mean I can't eat anything I want to eat. I remember teenage years and college age years where, where you know, junk food was my life and I could just eat whatever and it would actually make me feel better. You know, um, it, It's crazy how, how as I get older, as I see my, the first half of my life come to an end as I'm nearing 40 and, and, I, and I enter into the second half of my life, um, I'm not as young as I used to be. I may still love Christmas cookies, but Christmas cookies don't love me anymore. Um, it's amazing how, how eating unhealthy things can truly make us so unhealthy. It's, it's, a, it's a simple concept, but it's one that we all have to learn. Uh, some of us have to learn it the hard way. <laughs> you, may, you may be in a similar place in your life where, where you remember times past where, where you could do anything, you could eat anything, um, you could do all the phys- physical activity in the world, you could eat whatever you wanted, uh, you could maybe even do dangerous or risky things uh, physically, and, and you, were, you were just fine. But now, um, now our bodies can't process that junk food quite as well our wounds don't heal quite as quickly. Um, Our bones might break a little bit more easily. Um, Some of the things we've done to our bodies in the past have have quickly uh, repped the repercussions in our bodies today. We feel how unhealthy we are. As as I'm in this age of of realizing that I'm not 20 anymore, um, and as I look to the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years of my life, there's something I want to avoid. This is what I don't want to have happen. I don't want my kids to come to me in 10, 15, 20 years and have to have the talk with me. Do do you know the talk I'm talking about? It it might go something like this. Dad, it's time for you to see a doctor. Or Dad, I'm really worried about your weight. Or Dad, I'm really worried about all the food that you're eating. Dad, I, I, I'm really worried about the fact that you just sit in front of the TV all day long. Dad, I'm worried. It's time, it's time to get some help. I don't want my kids to have to do that with me. <laughs> Maybe you've been a part of that sort of conversation yourself. Maybe you've given the conversation to somebody. Maybe you've heard it from somebody. And it may not be around diet or exercise. It may be around some sort of activity or addiction. It it may be around any uh, variety of unhealthy living. But sometimes the talk is necessary because sometimes having the talk with somebody is the thing that's going to save them. Oftentimes we get to that point of having the talk with our loved ones because we feel like this might be the last opportunity we have the last chance to help them turn the corner, the last chance to help somebody go from an unhealthy life to a healthy life. Well, church, as much as I love our church, as much as I love our denomination of the United Methodist Church, I believe it's time to have the talk. (laughs) Just like somebody who who might not want to hear the talk about their diet or their exercise, you might not want to hear this one. Uh, But I want to ask you to trust me. I want to ask you to, to, to listen with a humble heart, not to me, but, um, but to God's word as we have this talk together. Because we're not just having it alone. We're having it with the greatest doctor in the world. You know, we don't have to go see a dietitian. We don't have to go see a health expert to have this talk. We have to go to the source. We have to go to Jesus Christ himself. And as you'll see in, um, on your screen, just a second if I'm doing this right. There we go. Um, as you see in Luke chapter 5, Jesus himself calls, calls himself the great doctor, right? He is the physician that we all need. In Luke chapter 5, uh, verse 31, he, he says, Those who are well have no need for a physician, but rather those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. God is the great physician. Jesus is the great physician who, co- who has not come for those who are healthy, but has come for those who who need him, who come for those who who are sinners, who are in need of repentance. And church, we would be foolish if we didn't think that that we were in that sinful group, that repentant group. 
Scripture is clear that, that all people have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, John, the, the letter of 1 John later on in our New Testament says that we, we would be foolish to say that we do not sin. <laughs> we, we need a Savior. We need a physician. We need somebody to show us how we've been gluttonous on fast food, feel-good theology uh, that, that might make us feel good in the moment, but, but makes us incredibly unhealthy as a church. We've, we've loved and all the pizza and the donuts theologically, but we've neglected the life-giving whole grain bread of Christ that, that God truly wants us to have to live a healthy lifestyle as a church. Again, I'm not talking about diet and exercise. I believe that's important. But what I'm talking about is, is how we've been gluttonous on, on junk food in the church, gluttonous on junk food theology, junk food thinking about Jesus, junk food living for Jesus. We, we've picked and chosen the things that make us feel good in the moment, like that bag of puffed Cheetos, uh, but, but we've neglected the things that can really keep us alive and keep us thriving as a church. Because we, we are unhealthy church. And when I say we, I'm talking about uh, Western Christianity in general. There are some great, wonderful, beautiful, healthy things about the church here in the West, but, but there are some very, very unhealthy things as well. And I think we have to start in our own backyard. We have to start with the United Methodist Church, our own denomination. You know, before, before we're called to point out all the specks of dust in other people's eyes, we've got we've to realize that we've got planks galore in our own eyes. Now, for those of you who may just be checking out United Methodism, for those of you who this may be your first experience ever worshiping with uh, Grace United Methodist Church, I want to assure you, I think this is the absolute best time for you to be joining us today. I think that, that today and over the next couple of months, as we have this tough conversation together, as we have the talk together, I think this is one of the best times for you to be here because what you're seeing now, what you're experiencing now is a church that's not afraid to be honest with ourselves. A church that's not afraid to be humble and to have God really point out where he longs for us to grow, where he longs for us to heal. I think this is one of the best times ever for you to be a part of the people called Grace United Methodist Church. The people here at this church are some of the most Jesus-focused, gospel-centered, saintly people you will ever meet. And when it comes to ministry in Alamogordo, New Mexico, I think Grace United Methodist Church is the exact church that Alamogordo needs in such a day as 2022. So I am so glad you're here. And I think these next couple of months as we have this talk together, will show you that we're serious about following Jesus. We'll show you that we're serious about God's call to reach the least and the lost, about God's call to live holy lives inside this church so that we can live holy lives outside the walls of this church. Now to everybody, I want you to hear this. I love the United Methodist Church. I do. I was born in this church, and as of today, I would be proud to die as a United Methodist pastor. I love this church. I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be worth my, my weight as a Methodist pastor if I didn't love this church. I hope every pastor loves the church that they are a part of. I love our denomination. I truly, truly do. But it's out of that love that I'm genuinely heartbroken over how unhealthy our denomination is. I'm heartbroken over, over the crisis that we now find ourselves in. I'm, I'm truly, truly heartbroken that, um, that we have not lived up to God's call on our lives. Over the past 50 years, our denomination of the United Methodist Church has seen nothing but decline. For 50 straight years in a row, uh, 50 plus, since 1968 till now, we have not seen a single year where we have gained more people than we've lost. Church, that's a sign of unhealth. That's a sign, among many other signs, that, that, um, that we're, we're feasting on something other than the Word of God, that we are, are living unhealthy lives as churches together. And it's time for us to listen to the great physician. It's time for us to have this talk together. Before we dive into the, the coming couple of months of, of looking at some specific ways where, where I think we can be more healthy, um, we're going to lay down some three ground rules today of how we're going to have this conversation. Three things that we're going to firmly ground ourselves in. Three ways that are going to make sure we stand on a firm foundation as we go through this talk together. Three things that are going to be so important for us to trust one another and to trust that this isn't just me, this isn't just somebody else, that this is truly God's call on our lives. And I'm, I'm humbled and I'm excited to do that with you. 
the first thing that I think we need to, to keep in mind as we have the talk as we have this conversation together is that in all things over these next two months and in everything that I hope that we do in the future as a church, that we focus on Jesus, that we refocus on Jesus. Church, our our denomination, the United Methodist Church, sadly, many in our denomination have lost our focus on Christ. Um, When we look at Paul's letter to Timothy, first of all, you know, if Jesus is the great physician, this letter to Timothy, it's like, it's like, the great nurse, Paul, passing on doctor's orders to Timothy in the church that Timothy is pastoring. Timothy is a young pastor, and he's he's noticing all these problems, uh, problems very similar to the problems that we're sensing today, problems of, of the world pulling the church in every which way, problems of the church feasting on junk food, theology about Christ and, and not truly feasting on, on the life-giving word of Christ. Um, those were the sort of problems that we face today, and those were the sort of problems that Timothy pa- faced 2,000 years ago. And, and Timothy was turning to the great physician. He was turning uh, to, to Christ. And, and Paul is passing on these doctor's orders. That's what 2 Timothy um, is very much so about. And when Paul starts his letter in chapter 1, he says this. He says, this is me, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God for the sake of the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Three times, three times in two verses. In his opening, this is like the beginning of the letter. This is where he should just be saying, dear Timothy. That's what you and I would say. But no, he says, dear Timothy. But he also says three separate times that this whole thing is going to be about Jesus. This whole thing is going to be focused through the lens of Christ Jesus, our Lord. We have to do the same thing. Anything we do that isn't focused on Jesus, it isn't Christian. Anything we do that isn't focused on Christ, it's not being the church. And many would look at the, the downfall in our denomination and the decline in the denomination. And, and many, uh, particularly on uh, the conservative side of things, would, would say, well, well, that's because of our wavering views on human sexuality. It's a pretty common excuse. I hear it all the time. I've used it in my life. But you know what, church, that's, that's not the problem in our denomination. That's not ultimately why we're unhealthy. It's a symptom. It's, it's, it's a crisis that we currently have. I'll give you that. I'm not ignorant to that fact that our church is incredibly divided over human sexuality. But it's, that's not the problem. The problem is our denomination, our leaders, our laity, we've lost focus on Jesus. We've lost focus on his lordship in our lives. Yes, there are clergy and there are laity who, who don't believe in Jesus. I'll admit you that. I know them personally. There are people who think that they can be a United Methodist pastor or they can be, belong to a United Methodist church and not believe that Jesus Christ is the one and true and only way to the Father. There are people in our churches who don't believe that Jesus truly raised from the dead. There are people in our churches, there are leaders in our churches who don't believe that we are called to preach a gospel of repentance and forgiveness. When Shannon and I were serving overseas, and even now when we tell some people in our denomination that we were once missionaries to Muslims in North Africa, that we were there for the explicit purpose of converting them from from Islam to Christianity, there are people within our denomination, people who claim to follow Jesus, who look at us with downcast eyes because they don't think that we should have been doing that, because they think that faithful Muslims can, can find God in their own way. Church, that is not Christianity. Christianity is a belief that Jesus Christ and Christ alone is the one and true and only way to God the Father. Amen? That's what we believe. If you don't believe that, that's okay, but, but this is not the place for you. <laughs> this is not where God is calling you to be right now. Well, I, well, first of all, I believe that this is the place where God is calling everybody to be, but, but, but this is you have a misunderstanding of what it truly means to follow Jesus. Scriptural Christianity... Christianity that is focused and focused solely on Jesus is Christianity that that wants everybody to know who Jesus is. Now, it's so easy to to point out the leaders that that have these extreme views about Jesus and might disagree greatly with me on who Jesus is, but, but you and I need to hear this as well. Because we might say that Jesus is Lord, but church, is Jesus really Lord of every aspect of your life? It might be really easy to say that our crisis is over uh, this particular aspect of human sexuality, but, but is Jesus truly Lord over every aspect of your life? 
It might be easy to point out the, the, the places that you disagree with other people's lives, but is Jesus truly Lord of your life? Let us start there and let us let that fruitfulness flow out from us. Let us start in that space. I might have a certain belief about human sexuality. I might believe uh, that, that what the church has held true to for 2,000 years of, of marriage between one man and one woman is what Scripture is saying. I do believe that. But church, my belief about human sexuality is not going to be what keeps Grace United Methodist Church thriving. Your belief about human sexuality is not going to be uh, what keeps uh, Grace United Methodist Church thriving. That's peripheral. <laughs> that's 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 the fruit of what we truly believe about Jesus. What what you should expect me to believe in is that Jesus is Lord. And as followers of Jesus, it's what I expect you to believe in, that Jesus is Lord. Let's let everything else flow from that. Let's start there. Let's start there with the grace and the love of Christ for all people, whether they agree with us or not. Let us welcome all people, whether they agree with us or not. And through that love and through that grace and through the Lordship of Jesus Christ, just as Paul is starting in Timothy, let that be how our lives are transformed and the lives of everybody else are transformed as well. God isn't just our great physician. God is the great physician of the world. And if we believe that, we should truly do all that we can to share the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ with every single person we meet. So we need to refocus on Jesus over these next couple months as we have this conversation. We also need to reclaim Scripture. I've hinted at this already, but we need to to look at this book as the one and only book that we need. As you can tell, in my office, I'm not afraid of books. I, I, I believe that that... Uh, leaders, I believe that Christians have a responsibility to learn, to, to, to gain wisdom, to, to, to experience the world through knowledge and, and gaining ed- education. I truly believe that. We have a great gift of education in this world. We should take the opportunity to do that. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, like uh, a founder of our Methodist movement, I hope to be a man of but one book. And I hope you are a man or a woman of but one book. That doesn't mean that we don't read. That doesn't mean that we don't maybe even read things that we vastly disagree with. I'm not afraid to experience things that I disagree with or to to read things that might challenge my own assumptions. But at the end of the day, I'm not afraid of that because I rest firmly on this, on the Word of God. And I long for all of this book to shape all of who I am, not just to pick and choose the food that I like, not just to pick and choose the food that I like because that leads to an unhealthy Christian life. But rather, I need the whole diet, right? The whole food pyramid of Scripture. I need to eat it so that I can be the healthiest follower of Jesus that I can be. And our church needs to eat this whole book so that we can be the healthiest church that we need to be. Paul, when he's talking about the gospel, he says that this is the gospel for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But but the Word of God is not chained. The Word of God is not chained. We might try to chain it. We might try to chain it and restrain it by only picking this verse or that passage, by only reading this passage that affirms what we already believe, but ignoring that passage that might challenge what we already believe. That's so easy to do. Just like it's so easy to go to that pantry and pull out that bag of Cheetos and neglect everything else. But we're supposed to eat the whole thing. We're supposed to consume the whole healthy diet of God's Word, not just the places that we like not just the things that make us feel good, not just the things that are comfortable for us. Getting back to our symptomatic crisis in our denomination when it comes to human sexuality, it's easy for people on either side of this conversation to pick and choose the verses that suit their opinion. But to be a person of one book, we have to, we have to do the good, hard, holy work of studying this book of reading this book, of of letting it shape and form us, and from there, letting it shape and form our view and our opinion and our approach to all aspects of life, not just one aspect, but all aspects, where God is calling us to holy living in every aspect of our life, in all of our relationships, our marriage relationships, and all other relationships as well. Church, if we say we value this book, when was the last time you turned to this instead of Fox News or CNN? (laughs) When was the last time, instead of spending 20 minutes scrolling through the Facebook feed on your phone, you said, you know what, I'm going to spend 20 minutes on this? Or better yet, if you're on your phone, spend 20 minutes on your Bible app, and not your Facebook app. If we say we truly value this book, church, let's truly value this book. Let's spend time in it. Let's read it. Let's, let's pray through it. 
and let's let it shape every aspect of who we are as a church. So we're going to refocus on Jesus as we have this talk over the next couple months. We're going to reclaim the authority of Scripture in our lives as we have this talk over the next couple months. And finally, we're going to refine our theology. Now, this is maybe where I'm about to lose a lot of you because I just used a word that, that a lot of people don't like to use. They, I use the word theology, not because it's a bad word, but it gives us these images that, of, of scholars in, in, in white ivory towers, right, you know, doing their theological work. Um, But here's the deal, church. If you've thought at all about God today, you've done theology. You know, if, if, if you are intellectually engaged with me, with your heart, mind, and soul with me right now, then you are being a theologian with me right now. That's what, that's what theology means. It's thinking about the things of God. So we've been doing since you logged on to to Facebook or YouTube this morning, you have been doing theology. And here's what I have to say about theology, specific Methodist theology. If we're going to call ourselves a Methodist church, then church, let's be Methodist for goodness sake. If we're going to, if we're going to be a people called Methodist in Alamogordo, New Mexico, the only Methodist church in this area, then let's be the people that God is calling us to be. At the end of the day, truly and genuinely, I just want you to be involved in the church. I genuinely do. It's like, I, it's like toothpaste. I just want you to use it. Now, do I have a preference on what toothpaste I use and what toothpaste I think might be best for you? Absolutely. Do I think that, that Grace United Methodist Church in Alamogordo, New Mexico is one of the best places for you to follow Jesus? Absolutely I do. I wouldn't be a good pastor if I didn't believe that about my church. But at the end of the day, I do want you to just be a part of a church. But also at the end of the day, whatever church you're a part of, be that church. Be who you say you are. And for those of you who, who are ready to invest in the ministry here at Grace United Methodist Church, for goodness sake, let's be Methodist. You might be saying, hey, that sounds great, but what does that mean? Well, I'm not one to often just you know, pull out a book and, and read a full paragraph, but, but I'm going to now because, because what is written in this book, this book that we're reading together as a church and, and we're studying on Wednesdays, if you're able to join us, um, it does a fantastic job of, of explaining what, what truly is Methodism what it means to follow Jesus in the Wesleyan way. Dr. Jeff Greenway, an evangelical United Methodist leader um, in our denomination, wrote this. He says, as an evangelical United Methodist, we are for Jesus. We believe in a risen, living, grace-giving, sin-forgiving, life-changing Jesus who accepts us as we are and transforms us into who he created us to be. We believe in the nature and the authority of, of Scripture that has been embraced by the majority of Christians around the world for 2,000 years. We believe in a global movement of Wesleyan Jesus followers who are committed to take the life-changing message of the gospel to every people, tribe, clan, and tongue. We believe in the new birth as described in the scripture and taught by John Wesley. We believe in holiness of heart and life, and not just a moral code or rules and regulations that must be followed to be Christian. We believe in a thoughtful faith that warms and changes hearts and works itself out in social justice that is connected to personal holiness. We believe in the deep transformation that happens through the Holy Spirit, which enables us to perfectly love God and perfectly love our neighbor as we are renewed every day. Amen, amen, amen. Church, if that's who God is calling us to be as Christians, that's who I want us to be. That's who I want Grace United Methodist Church to be. And let us do it through all things, through thick and thin and good times and hard. In our scripture passage for today in 2 Timothy, by the time we get to chapter 4, it's like t- Paul has, has shared with Timothy what, what his theology needs to be. Just like I've shared with you what I believe our theology needs to be. And then he says this. He says in chapter 4, the, verse 2, to proclaim this message. To proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. Being consistent to our theology is not going to be easy, church. Refocusing on Jesus is not going to be easy. Reclaiming the authority of Scripture is not going to be easy. Because just like what Timothy experienced, we experience today, the world is pulling us in so many different directions. The world is telling us not to focus on Jesus. The world is telling us not to focus on on scripture. The world is telling us not to refine our theology and to be Methodist. Heck, there are even people in the United Methodist Church who would read that paragraph and say, nope, that's not who we want to be. 
There are so many people pulling us from who God really is calling us to be. But through all that, Paul tells Timothy, and Paul tells us today, keep on preaching it. Keep on proclaiming it. And he's not just talking to pastors, he's talking to you. Keep on proclaiming this message. Keep on. Be persistent. Whether it's favorable for us or not, keep on sharing the message of Jesus Christ. We refocus on Jesus. We reclaim Scripture in our lives. And we truly be Methodists. Church, I get it. I get how easy it is to only pick the things off the shelf that we like. To only believe the things that make us feel good about ourselves. To only read the passages that we like to read. To only think about certain aspects of Methodism that that have suited us well in the past. It's so, so easy. It's so, so easy just to have our ears tickled and to hear what we want to hear. It's easy today and it was easy 2,000 years ago. As Paul said to Timothy, For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. This was a warning from Paul to Timothy 2,000 years ago, and it's a reality for us today. People are picking and choosing exactly what they want. It's easier now than it has ever been to pick up that phone and just find exactly what you want to hear. You can, you can find somebody who's going to justify anything for you. Any sort of lifestyle you want to live, and if you want to find somebody say it's justified by Scripture, you can find it. It's pretty easy. You can pick and choose. You can grab that bag of potato chips. You can pull out those puffed Cheetos. You can, you can eat the things that you want to eat, but church, it's going to kill you. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you unhealthy, not just as an individual follower of Jesus, but it's going to make us unhealthy as a church. We've got to eat the life-giving bread of Christ, the life-giving bread that focuses us solely on who Jesus is, the life-giving bread that, that helps us reclaim this one book as our authority in life. The, we've, we've, got to, we've got to eat of the life-giving, healthy bread of, of Jesus Christ, our Lord, so that we can truly be the people called Methodists that God calls us to be. And I have hope that as we do that, as we refocus on Jesus, as we reclaim Scripture in our lives, as we are truly Methodists, then, guys, I don't think you understand how incredible the things are that God is going to do through us. I I imagine it's going to be like what it was 300 years ago when those great evangelical Methodist revivals in England and in the Americas happened. I imagine it's going to be something even more uh, than, than when at the heyday of the Methodist movement, there was a Methodist church in every single county in the continental U.S. I imagine it's going to be so much more than, than when, at, at, again, at that same heyday of our Methodist movement, that, that we were so excited about evangelizing and discipling people for Jesus Christ that one out of every three people in the U.S. who called themselves Christians were a Methodist. And church, the stakes are greater than they've ever been here in Alamogordo. Because seven out of ten people in this town, seven out of ten people that you see when you go to Walmart or when you eat at Cease and Yours, seven out of ten people that you see when you're walking your dog in the morning, seven out of ten people say that they don't believe in Jesus in this town. Say that they do not belong to a faith community. Seven out of ten people are ready to hear the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Church, I think this is a great opportunity for us to be having this talk. Because just when the world is needing us to be healthy, it's the perfect time for us to actually talk about being healthy, becoming healthy. So I'm humbled and I'm blessed and I'm excited about the conversation that we're going to have. It's going to be fun sometimes and other times it's going to be hard. But together, as we trust one another, as as we focus on Jesus, as we keep Scripture primary in our life, and as we truly ask God, what does it mean to be a Methodist in the year 2022? I believe great things are in store. So church, let's get healthy. Let's have this talk together. Let's have a talk that's going to rest us on a firm foundation of Christ and Christ alone. And know that we are not alone in this, that we have the great physician, Jesus Christ himself, who best of all is with us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day that you've blessed us with to to worship together. 
Lord, I thank you for everybody's patience on the other side of, of this sermon, those, those watching and worshiping. I, I pray for their understanding for for, uh, I thank you for their understanding and their patience on the, the different uh, uh, venue and, and the different uh, mode that we're doing this this morning. But I praise you that, that you have moved um, in our midst. I pray that this word of focusing on you, of, of reclaiming scripture in our lives and, and truly asking you what it means to be a Methodist, I, I hope it stays with us as we have this conversation together. Bless each and every one of us. You know our challenges. Uh, may you meet us in each and every one of them. You know our praises and thanksgivings. Lord, we give you all, uh, all, the, all the honor and all the glory for all the ways that you bring joy and gladness into our lives. And be with us as we go our way today. And Lord, I do just want to, uh, to, to ask that, that you bless each and every person uh, worshiping with us today, each of their families, each of their loved ones. Keep us all safe, keep us all healthy. And until we are blessed to gather again in worship, Assure us that best of all, you are with us every step of the way. We ask all this in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, church, thank you for uh, worshiping with us today. Thank you for starting this conversation with me. Uh, thank you for trusting me to have this conversation with you. But don't just trust me. Trust God first and foremost. Trust the great physician as he leads us into this new age of what it means to be Grace United Methodist Church in Alamo, Gordo, New Mexico. Be blessed in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and never forget that best of all, God is with each and every one of us. Take care. See ya.